Look carefully at the ball when the wagon moves from left to right. It appears as if the ball moves backward, but it actually maintains its position as the car moves under it. When the wagon stops, the ball moves forward with the same speed it had when the wagon was moving. The ball's motion can be understood when you understand Newton's first law of motion. In just three laws, Isaac Newton taught us almost everything we needed to know about the acceleration that is produced when an object receives a net force. His second law of motion shows us that the acceleration a body receives depends directly on the size of the net force the object receives and indirectly on the object's mass. Large net forces create large accelerations and large masses are more difficult to accelerate than small masses. Newton's first law is called the law of inertia and it describes what happens to the acceleration of a body when the net force on it is zero. There are two forces on this man right now who's sitting in the chair. There is the downward force of gravity and the upward force of the chair. These forces are equal but opposite, so the net force on him is zero. In the first law, Newton states that when forces on an object at rest are balanced, it tends to stay at rest. When the net force is zero and an object's in motion, it tends to stay in motion. In a straight line, unless acted on by an unbalanced force, the balanced forces shown here would not cause an object to accelerate. If an object is at rest when it received these forces, it would remain at rest. And if an object was in motion when it received these forces, it would maintain its speed and direction forever. The forces on the blue dot are not balanced, so these forces would cause the object to accelerate, which means that these forces could cause an object to speed up, slow down, or change direction. Which box would not accelerate? The box that would not accelerate is the one whose forces are balanced. That would be choice C. If box C were at rest when it received these forces, it would remain at rest. If it were moving when it received these forces, it would maintain its speed and direction forever. It wouldn't speed up, slow down, or change direction. In other words, if a moving object has no unbalanced force on it, it would maintain its speed and direction forever. Now the opposite is true. If an object has an unbalanced force on it, it will change its speed and or direction. When you're in a car traveling at constant velocity, your net force is zero. The forward force from the tires equals the backwards friction force. At constant velocity, the acceleration is zero, so the net force equals zero. When the Apollo 11 astronauts traveled to the moon, they turned off their engine rockets and coasted for most of the way. In the absence of the force of gravity or any other force, once a rocket is set in motion, no force is needed to keep it in motion. Newton's first law states that objects with a net force of zero move in a straight line with constant velocity. On this basis, Newton concluded that since the moon circles around the Earth, it must have a net force on it. He proposed that the same force that curves a rock to the ground curve the moon around the Earth. Of course, this force is gravity. A force is needed to change motion. If the road this car was traveling on was smooth ice, there would be no way that the car could travel in a circle. Let's look at the example you saw in the beginning of this presentation in terms of what you've just learned. When the wagon starts moving, the ball is at rest, so it remains at rest. When the wagon stops moving, the ball has no net force on it, so it continues to move with constant velocity. In order to improve the safety of cars and aircraft, a pilot named John Stapp volunteered to test the effect of extreme decelerations on the human body. Because an object in motion tends to stay in motion, John Stapp sustained lifelong injuries from these tests. You can see in the picture on the right that during these incidences of rapid deceleration, the blood in his veins rushed to the front of his body. He suffered broken ribs, limbs, and a detached retina caused by permanently burst blood vessels in his eyes. What makes the world go round? This is one of the oldest questions in physics. The problem with the question, though, that made it impossible to answer was that it had a mistaken assumption. It was an assumption that went back all the way to Aristotle. 
Aristotle thought that the rule of the universe was that all moving objects, if left alone, would naturally come to rest. Newton explained that nothing causes the spinning of the earth. A force must have sent it spinning, but once in motion, if there's no net force on it, it will maintain that motion forever. Let me summarize what you've learned. Newton's first law describes what happens to the acceleration of a body when the net force is zero. When the net force in an object is zero, it will move with constant velocity or remain at rest. This is the end of my presentation on the first law of motion.